practice number 15. And so, uh, what some of their thoughts were uh, to maybe make it a little bit more competitive uh, and perhaps have a jersey scrimmage uh, to end the spring. Uh, Shelly mentioned the fact that uh, we have a little different helmet for the spring, um, which we think is pretty cool. Uh, Louis Van Hoos and his, uh, his crew and, and uh, Diana Sable and, and the creative bunch, they, they're always coming up with good thoughts. Um, I think it's been no secret as you've been around here. Um, we take a lot of pride in the United States military. Um, we glean a lot of lessons from the United States military. Uh, we study from them. We invite folks that have been on deployment and folks that are getting ready to go on deployment or people that have just signed up to be a part of our United States military to, to spend time in our practices so that our young people have an appreciation. We've all been in the outer hallway and so forth and, and know how we like to recognize what they do. So our helmets this spring, and this won't be for the fall, but for, for the spring uh, will be uh, kind of letting our United States military know how much we appreciate them. Uh, we talked a little bit yesterday with our team that as we showed them, they just saw these helmets yesterday for the first time, and that, you know, uh, when you have the, the catastrophe in Japan, uh, one of the first groups that goes over and tries to make a difference is the United States military. When you have the unrest in the Middle East, or wherever unrest happens to occur, it always seems like the United States military is one that, if there's a solution that uh, becomes one that everyone agrees upon, that the United States military is going to need to be a part of it. And uh, so uh, we talk a lot about that. I think it's going to be an exciting thing uh, as we go uh, to have our kids proudly wear that. And, and uh, I don't know if Shelly will give you more information on what goes from there on the helmet thing, but our guys, one thing I've, I've learned about young people is they love to have different things especially when it comes to what they wear and so forth, and, and uh, they were excited. They were ooh and ah about uh, the helmet uh, when they saw it last night. Um, let me move to some personnel things quickly, and then uh, we'll have a chance to have Luke come up and visit with you for a minute and throw some questions at him, and then I'll come back and we can throw some questions uh, my way. But uh, one of the things that we've talked a lot about with the staff here in the last uh, few days when We've gotten back from our spring break and from our studies at other places and so forth is um, where do we really need leadership to emerge? Because uh, while Brian Roll and Ross Holman were outstanding linebackers and we're going to miss hundreds of tackles from them, uh, their leadership was you know, extraordinary. Uh, Cam Hayward was, a, I hope, a first round draft choice. Uh, but his leadership, uh, you know, was something special. Dane Sanzenbacher, uh, Brandon Sane, and on and on and on. Uh, where can we expect leadership to emerge? Um, in the winter, you see a little bit of it. Um, in the weight room and so forth. Uh, but I think you really find out about your leadership as you start playing the game. And you start, you start having situations arise and... And injuries occur and adversity and, and, and all the rest. Uh, and you start having a win-loss record. And you start having some things you need to handle. You find out where your leadership needs to emerge. And we think it starts by position group. Because in that position room, someone's got to set the standard. And out on the practice field and the individual drills and so forth, someone's got to set the standard. So we kind of went around the room a little bit in our staff meeting. And we talked a little bit about, of course, who has to step up in performance, but you know who really needs to step up from a leadership standpoint. And, and uh, when you start talking about uh, that safety position, you know where you lose a Jamel Hines, uh, you know guys like Tyler Moeller, who's coming back for a sixth year, uh, is a, a guy that can step up in that room. Orion Johnson's played a lot of football. A guy like Nate Ebner, who's a senior, who's a walk-on, who's on special teams, uh, we really believe he's got to step up. And you get into that corner room, 
and you lose both Chim and Devon. And so obviously uh, you lose all your leadership from a corner standpoint. Uh, the beauty of what occurred in the bowl game was that uh, Dominic Clark uh, had a chance to get in there and, and uh, see if he could handle the situation. And I think he gained some confidence. In fact, I was talking with Malcolm Jenkins uh, yesterday. It's kind of fun. Part of the uh, lockout thing is kind of fun for us because all of our NFL guys are back here because they need a place to train. Now, I hope they get it squared away. But uh, I was talking with Malcolm yesterday, and I said it's interesting to watch Dominic Clark. We've kind of seen, you know, he's always had great ability. He was young. Uh, we've kind of seen a little bit of a transformation from him, not unlike we saw from you, Malk, when you were moving along in age, you pledged your fraternity, all of a sudden you had a little bit of a humility moment uh, from that standpoint, and all of a sudden uh, your career took off. We said, you know, we've seen a little bit of that uh, from Dominic. He got to jump in there in the Sugar Bowl, and then he had a, the best academic quarter he's ever had uh, this winter. His leadership was starting to raise a little bit uh, in the winter workouts, and uh, and we're going to need that from Dominic Clark, and we're going to need it from Travis Howard. Deontay Allen's a guy coming in uh, who did his sit-out year, uh, transferring from Florida State, and uh, we feel as if we're going to need some leadership from all of those guys. Donnie Evich is a young guy going into his fifth year, fought the injury bug forever. Uh, you always dream about your seniors having their best career year. If you have one of those teams that your seniors have their best career year, even if they hadn't had a whole bunch of play, if, if they could just raise it up just a little bit, uh, you have a chance for that leadership to emerge. Then into the linebacker room, the, I've got my personnel sheet here. We lost so many guys that I've got to look at the look at who we got. But, uh, you know, obviously Andrew Sweat is a guy that uh, stepped in when Ross was hurt last year. Played very, very well. Uh, he's a senior. He's an extraordinary student. He's a student of the game. Uh, he does things exactly the way that you'd like them done. And, and uh, guys like Etienne Sabino, who redshirted last year so that he could stay another year. Storm Klein now is going into that third season. So the leadership and the opportunity to play and so forth. Uh, those guys need to step up uh, in that linebacker room. Up front, you know, when you lose guys like Dex and you lose Cameron Hayward, uh, someone beeping there. Uh, you lose two guys like that, you're losing some production, but you're losing extraordinary leadership. I mean, Dex just walked across and got his diploma a week ago Sunday, and, and uh, Cam's going to be drafted, I hope, in the first round, and then walk and get his diploma in June. And, and those guys are tremendous leaders. Uh, John Simon has emerged as a guy that we believe needs to take the next step from a leadership standpoint. Nate Williams and Solly Thomas. Uh, Solly had his best academic quarter uh, since he's been here. He was, as I said at the outset, uh, outstanding during this entire winter time. Uh, but those three guys have got to step up and take the leadership role in that defensive front room. And you flip over to the offense, we've got three offensive linemen who are seniors uh, who obviously need to have great years playing uh, but need to have a, a great opportunity to lead. Mike Brewster we think is the best center in the country. Uh, he's played a whole bunch of games. He trains like crazy. Uh, he will be a leader. Uh, then the two tackles, J.B. Shugarts and Mike Adams. Uh, Mike Adams had by far his best winner uh, and awfully proud of of the way that he led. Those three guys have got to help the rest of that young bunch uh, because there's only seven other guys in that room right now until the freshmen get here. Uh, they've got to do a tremendous job of making sure that the Jack Muhorts and the Corey Lindsleys uh, and the Marcus Halls. Marcus had the finest academic quarter he's had since he's been here and he had a chance to redshirt last year so last quarter. So you know, with that leadership of those three guys, we have a chance there. 